What's going on everybody? My name is Joe Hurst. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be designing a men's typographic style logo for a luxury men's brand. Along with that, we're also going to be designing a standalone monogram. So we're going to have a main typographic logo and a standalone monogram. So I'm going to go ahead and take you through my design process. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, so with any project, after talking to the client and getting them onboarded, throughout some of the onboarding process, there's a questionnaire that I'll have them fill out. Once they filled that out, we'll usually have a, another brief discussion where I'll go ahead and take notes. And that's usually where clients may or may not have some questions where I can kind of get to know or get a feel for the type of direction um, that they're looking to move or the type of ideas that the client has before we even begin a project. And then from there, after asking my questions or any follow-up questions that I may have for the client or any questions that they may have, we move on to the mood boarding phase. And this is just where I typically gather a collection of images, type, um, different mock-ups and color palettes or color schemes. And I'll either work directly with the client at this point or I'll mock these up on my own. And all I'm trying to do at this point is get a reference for the type of style and the direction that the client's looking to move in. So taking all of the information that the client's given me in their questionnaire, uh, part of a brief that we work on together, and the phone call that we have before the project even begins, um, taking all of those things into account, I move forwards with creating mood boards. Usually I do multiples of these. In this case, we are very focused in, so I'm just doing the one. And then I will send that to the client for approval for the direction that they're looking to move in. Um, they may pick elements from one, bits of both. They may just fall in love with one. They may hate everything. Uh, but this just gives me an idea of where we need to focus and in which direction that we need to go. After the mood boarding phase, once we have an approved mood board, we move into the design phase. And the design phase is as simple as it sounds. Um, it's all the design stuff. So obviously taking into account everything from the mood board selection uh, to specific likes or dislikes that the client may or may not want to include. Uh, I move straight into the logo design process, which always starts in black and white or in grayscale. Um, there's never any color ever involved at this point. Like I mentioned in the intro, we are going for a typographic style logo and I'm just plotting out some fonts and some styles for the fonts that I'd be interested in using uh, based on client feedback and the direction for the logo. And I'm really looking to sort of tie this typographic logo together and make it just have some sort of optical flow where it helps you read, but also I want part of this to stand very strongly on its own. A lot of men's fashion brands are very bold. A lot of uh, modern and boutique styles are using capital serif letters, and I really didn't want to go that direction. So for this specific logo, I really wanted to focus on keeping everything in lowercase and giving emphasis to the G, which is going to be their icon for the brand. Um, I did venture into exploring other options for a G and I really didn't like the direction it was heading. I kind of wanted to have this sort of like standalone, uh, very round letter for a G. Realized it really wasn't going to work for the type of style that we were going for here and I immediately gave up on it. As soon as I started trying it, I realized it wasn't going to work. And that leaves us with where we're at now. So now that I have the concept for the logo dialed in, I'm going to go ahead and mock up some patterns for the logo. Um, this is honestly quite overly done in uh, logo design and branding, specifically for mock-ups and stuff. I think uh, when people make patterns for logos, they really need to just kind of like dial it back by like five sometimes. Um, you can really overwhelm uh, viewers and onlookers, especially the client, by just slamming loads of different pattern styles into your brand presentation. So here I'm just making the outline for a pattern that I'm probably going to edit a lot later, which I in fact do. And then I finish the icon idea that I'm working with here for the standalone G. So once I have everything squared away, I then move into the color side of things. And I really wanted to go this green and sort of like bronzy, bronzy gold um, route. But after playing with it for so long, I kind of just felt like there were so many different luxury 
um, brands doing this. And it felt to me to be like more of a hotel color scheme than anything else. Um, so I went back to the drawing board in terms of color and wanted to get something that was just so much more masculine than the greens and golds. I really wanted to keep that gold to portray a little bit more elegance and a little bit more sophistication. Uh, but we moved to this off-white, sort of like a, a cool gray um, and a really deep navy blue and a nice kind of royal blue. And then obviously we're accenting that with white and gray. And here I am just mocking everything up really quickly in terms of a logo presentation, uh, getting the pattern onto a background. I think one thing that separates a lot of brand designers from others is the fact that some of them don't think about the actual application of the brand. So it's really important, especially when you're picking type, if you're going to include this in brand guidelines, which you absolutely should, it should be part of the main focus along with the color and the logo usage. Um, you think about how the type is gonna be laid out. You think about the scaling of the type, the heading sizes, the subheading sizes, etc., And then you think about that brand in action. So here I am just mocking up a faux magazine page or a spread or a, actually just three pages. Um, and I have multiple paragraphs of text laid out here. I have the brand colors, the headlines that I'm planning on using, along with some photography and how that would be used. And I'm just laying everything out to get a feel so that I can really imagine it myself coming to life. And of course, this helps the client if they ever need to see something like this too, to help back up your reasoning behind choosing certain elements. All right, all that's left now is the logo and the brand reveal. So without any further delay, I'll let you guys enjoy.